Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, April 14th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 141 days. The game against Michigan in 227 days. The Ohio State spring game, much closer than that. It is just three days away. And I don't know about you, but I'm already getting pretty excited to not only see real live football inside the horseshoe again, but with some real live fans there as well. Uh, my guest today will be at the game on Saturday. His name is Kirk Barton. He's a former OSU captain and All-American. You probably knew that already. Kirk, outside of the game itself, like, you know, we'll, we'll get into the players and the position battles and all that stuff later. Like, just outside of all that, like, what are you most excited for on Saturday? I mean, as, as you know, someone who's spectating, just seeing if any young guys step to the forefront, I mean, it's, it's kind of tough because there's a lot of mass matchup disadvantages where, you know, you'll have some young walk on against like Garrett Wilson and it looks terrible sometimes. But I mean, you know, just seeing the guys get out there in, in the shoe for the first time and see how they handle it. You know, obviously the crowd's going to be much smaller than normal, but, you know, so just playing in that building, it adds a little something to to the day. And just seeing, you know, the cohesion, you know, if we, we're going to have some, you know, we have a punting battle going on. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how many punts those guys get. Um, and see the quarterbacks. I mean, everybody wants to see the quarterbacks and, you know, they're going to kind of be at the mercy of how, good their offensive lines are i guess you could say sometimes you have to put out a tackle that's not gonna you know really play much in the regular season and you can get some mismatches that way but it'll be interesting to see how they how they do as a player was this something that you really look forward to you know all spring like you know i can't wait to see this you know get to the spring game and and if so was that like because then spring practice is over or was that because you were really excited to play in the horseshoe in front of fans or, or was this just like really just another practice it's absolutely the feeling of spring practice is over you know it's like when you're like a kid or when you're a parent and you're like leading up to like winter break you know when you're in high school and you get like two straight weeks off like it's like that kind of feeling you're like oh my god i can't wait for this friday to be over and you know, these guys they're all going to go out after the game uh you know the weather's nice you know guys are going to want to have a few cocktails and celebrate not having to practice until august so it's it's usually it's a it's a pretty good feeling to be done with spring ball. Some of these guys, you know, the, the haze in the barn because this past Saturday was actually a much bigger scrimmage because all of it's all good on good. And you know, guys like Thayer Munford actually did the scrimmage. Like Thayer, we probably won't see in the spring game. You know, a lot of the the older veteran guys will be just watching. So or they'll or they'll play like a small not like one drive. It's like it's kind of like the fourth preseason game in the NFL. Like you're gonna see the starters for one drive and then they you know you mothball them and get ready for August. Is there a little bit of an extra charge? Is this a little more special than a normal practice just because you're in the horseshoe and there's actually some people there watching you? Or is is it very much just like, the, just kind of exactly like everything else, just in front of more people? I think there's always a charge when you're in front of more people. Like you never want to lose a rep. You never want to get beat in any facet, but it's worse to do it in front of you know fans on a TV camera than it is at a regular practice just because it has that pressure of, you know, if somebody gets roasted all day in the spring game, they're going to talk about it till August. You know, we're going to be in the dog days of four straight months of, oh, my God, this guy can't play. You know, it was like Justin Fields' his first year. Personally, and this shows, you know, how smart I am. Like, I was worried about Justin because he, he was like two for 11 in the spring game. And he had one, like, 80-yard completion where the DB, like, fell down. And you know, I was like, 90, God. I was 99 like, yards to Ben Victor, yes. 99 that's, that's yards what to I'm, Ben Victor. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. And it's like, you know, so – does that mean anything? It turns out it didn't because he had one of the most prolific seasons of all time in, in 19, but you were, you know, and for four months, you know, until that first snap in September, I mean, people like, can he throw the ball? Like, can we, are we going to throw it? You know, because we're coming off Dwayne Haskins, who threw it better than anybody in the history of the school. And then we see two for 19 from our five-star savior. And you're like, hey, how's this going to look this year? And it turned out it didn't matter. And he was fantastic, but you know, it's just something that people kind of stew on over the dog days of summer because that's like that's the last clip that they have to watch. You know, and you know, and and, and you're not really going to get to see our our defense just because we've run such a vanilla defense in the spring game, and it's you know it's going to be real interesting. Like I, I can't wait to watch the film and watch these guys compete. Yeah, when you were there, it w it always seemed like the offense was behind the defense in the spring. Like I, I just, I just remember sitting through this like endless series of Jim Trestle spring games where it was like the final score was six to three. And it was like, well, it wasn't quite as exciting was, as the score might have indicated. Two, two, 2002, <laughs> year we won the national championship. That spring game when race Claret came early, 
was six to three. And it was the most boring football game I've ever seen. I was a recruit. I I watched that and I was like, this is terrible. Oh my God. So <laughs> yeah. I, I feel you. Yeah. I mean, is that, that, that obviously is not the case now. I mean, you're, this will probably, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what to expect, but the, you know, they've at least been like 20 to 17, 24 to 17 kind of games. And this is, you know, this is going to be a little different. It's probably not going to be as much of a game game as, as some of the previous ones have. Mm-hmm. Is that just a shift in the, uh, the talent at Ohio state, the balance of power within the program at Ohio state between offense and defense? Is that the shift in the game of football on the whole, or was that just like, yeah, Jim Trestle showed, you know, Jim Trestle was vanilla during the best of times. And then, got even more vanilla when it was spring. I honestly, I think it has to do with how football's changed. You know, I don't want to be too much of a profit, but like when Nick Saban says stuff there, says we led the SEC in defense, we give up 19 points a game. You know, when 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Bama's given up like 19 points in like six games. You know I mean? I mean the, the game's just different now. It's, it's kind of like when you watch the NBA and you don't really see like Patrick Ewing and David Robinson, like back to the basket centers anymore. You see, you know, Carl Anthony Towns who shoots threes, you know, like guys, you know, big guys are out shooting threes. They're not, it, it, it doesn't look like the same game. That's what well, football is now. It's the same in the NFL. Like, I mean, the, the points are way up. Uh, it's never been harder to play cornerback. Uh, quarterbacks have never been better. You know, offensive minds have never been better. So the points are going way up. And, and I think, well, it'll reflect that on, on Saturday. I mean, it's just, this is part of the new wave of the game. And, you know, I think people have to adjust their expectations as to what, good defense is now you know i mean there's not many shutouts anymore and people just got to get used to that you know and this saturday i mean in terms of expectations ryan day was kind of camping down the idea that like hey this is gonna be like a normal game he said they might not tackle they they may just kind of thud which is basically like stick and wrap and don't bring someone mm-hmm. to the ground they may do that most or all of the game everything after halftime may be more situational rather than a real game where they're just going to put the ball in the 25 and say it's you know second and 10 go or whatever um as a player would you have wanted something as close to a game as possible for the spring game and you know maybe would that answer have changed as you went from a young guy to an upperclassman i i think it's more beneficial for guys to tackle tackle on the ground treat it like a real game if they'll be you can't be scared of getting injured because people get injured in non-contact situations all the time. But yeah, it seems it's really gotten away to, to just being like tag off two hand touch, which is it's fine. But like for the fans, like nobody wants to watch that. Um, as you get older, like your goal is to not have to play in the spring game. Be good enough where you play like one drive and you're out and let the young guys go play. Let the guys that don't get into the stadium normally. You know, it's, like I said, it's a lot like an NFL preseason game. Like if you're playing in that fourth game, you're kind of on the fringe of the roster. Like you don't need to point where you're a starter, you're established, you're on the team. You don't have to worry about cut day. That's kind of what it's like in the spring game, you know, because it's it's an exhibition. Um, you know, if it's a real game, you know, it's not like Alan Iverson, but like, you know, you're out there dying for it. But like when it's an exhibition, I mean, you want to let everybody clear the bench, let everybody play, let their parents see them play in the shoe, you know, get the photo like they're Disney World and, and, and you know, kind of mothball it until the season starts in, in August. Do you have a favorite spring game memory, you know, either a play personally or a player who you remember, really remember really showing out or, you know, hey, the, the walk on who, uh, you know, had the 80 yard touchdown in the, you know, the closing minutes yeah. when there's 5000 people left in the stadium. Anything stand out or not really? This is this is going to be awful, but I, I played in a spring game and, uh, you know, we had that big scrimmage on like Saturday and then Monday we kind of had like kind of a lighter practice or. Yeah, you know, like it might be the day before the spring game. We had like a lighter practice. I think we might have just been in like shoulder pads or whatever. And we were like just kind of running through some stuff. And there was a defensive end who actually like 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 went really hard, like in kind of a, a run through walkthrough period. It wasn't like a super, you know, high intensity period. And he like ran past me. And like uh, and Jim Bowman just destroyed me, like ripped me. You know, because we we're all like sore and it's like a walkthrough. So I mean you're not it's not like you're not out making plays. They don't keep statistics in a walkthrough, but it was like one of those. And I was furious. I was so mad. And I told him, I was like, dude, I'm going to, you know, your parents are going to be on the side. I was like, you're going to see me in the game. You know, there's going to be no hiding. And dude, I, I got into the game against this kid and absolutely destroyed. It was so bad. I mean, it was, I was blocking him down the field, dumping him. I put my, we had a pass set where I just put my hands on his throat, choked him. I mean, it was like, you know, you can do that stuff and like kind of be a hero, but like 
you know, when you have to actually see me in the game, it's different. You know, there, it's not practice anymore. There's no more. I mean, this is like the real thing. And he saw me and, and like, and I don't like doing that to people, but like, you know, if you're going to do something like that and kind of like show me up when, you know, it's not really like a really like go hard drill, like, like you're going to have to see me in the game. It's, it's not a guy that ever plays significant minutes at all, but man, he had to see I mean, it wasn't pretty. And I, you know, I, I felt bad about it, but I deep down, I really didn't, you know, because when you, you want to do that, man, sometimes you got to pay the piper and he had to pay the piper that day in front of his family, which you know, is what it is. So uh, this Saturday, I mean, it's at, you know, spring games are generally more like see the younger guys that, you know, you, you're not going to see a ton out of Garrett, Garrett Wilson on, on Saturday. You're probably not going to see a ton out of Chris Olave on Saturday, but are there specific guys on either side of the ball that you're or position groups that you're like most interested in watching and, and just kind of seeing how things look on Saturday? I mean, for me, it's the quarterbacks just being in less an optimal situation. Like they're both going to have mishmash offensive lines, kind of mishmash receivers. Um, obviously, our receivers are ultra talented this year, so that one doesn't matter as much. But, you know, just seeing how these guys react to being pressured and, you know, being, you know, you know, if, can they hang in there if they get sacked a few times or if they throw a pick? And, you know, I, I just, you know, the, the O-line always has it tough in a spring game because a lot of times you play next to a guy that you don't normally play next to, so it's tougher. Uh, you don't really have that chemistry like you normally would. So um, it's always real interesting to see how how the lines come together and see if there's, you know, sometimes it's like they put like the first team offense on one side with the second team defense. And then there's some, there's some cohesion, the second team offense with the first team defense. Like that's like how they pair up the scarlet and gray. But it's going to be real interesting because even with that said, there's a lot of guys that aren't going to play. Like Farrell, Sit, and, you know, so you have DeWand at left tackle or you put a right tackle. Like, Nick Petit Frere, who missed practice, he's probably not going to do much. So you put the one at right tackle. Like, there's still going to be like those little cohesion issues that you have every year in the spring game. And I'm just looking forward to seeing the quarterbacks because it's, you know, when the, when the lines aren't in sync and there's a little bit of chaos, like who can operate, who can, you know, deliver the ball under pressure. And there's always pressure. Like, there's always like a defensive, like Solomon Thomas, the one who had seven sacks in the spring game. Like, <laughs> he didn't have two sacks his whole career. You know? But that's, he went against a kid named Josh Kerr, who was a walk-on tackle, and ran past him a bunch. And yeah, you know, he looked like Derek Thomas. So you know, that's that's just how the spring games tend to go. They always favor the defense, even though they play a vanilla scheme. But you know, the D, D line is so much easier to play than O line, um, you know, especially in the pass rush situation. You get like that one bad matchup where it's a good player, a good young pass rusher against an overmatched guard or tackle. It can get real ugly real fast. Well, I tend to end every episode with a nice sales pitch telling people they are like clinically insane if they're not members of BuckeyeScoop.com. And we have had another fantastic yeah. week. This has been like the week of Nevada Buck churning out uh, great nuggets from inside practice. He had a just really, really interesting report on the special teams yesterday. But uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'll let you do the uh, Buckeye Scoop sales pitch today. Yeah, we're the largest and fastest growing Ohio State uh, football community um, with the top source for inside information. We have the best recruiting guys. You know, our community is fantastic. Uh, you know, we have a no politics policy, which makes it, you know, it's a safe, safe zone for everybody. But we have, a, we have a really intelligent crew of people on our board, and it really makes it fun. Uh, you know, we did Zach Smith's podcast, which was excellent. We've had some great scrimmage nuggets, uh, some great practice nuggets. You know, people really want to know what's going on on the inside of the program. And that's what we're good at. Um, we have great sources, and we really enjoy we enjoy interacting with our, our members of the Scoop family. So, you know, if, if you want to really know what's going on with Ohio State football, Buckeye like Scoop's the place to be. Yeah, I, I have said multiple times, like, if you are the kind of person that, like, just shows up on the first game and is like, oh, who's the starting running back this year? Like, after, you, after you're sitting in the stadium, like, that's cool. Like, that's fine. But if you are the kind of person who likes to know, like, what's the, what's the running order for the running backs? Like, who's, who's going to be first string? Who's going to be second string? You know, how are all the young freshmen looking? If you can run through the too deep on uh, the offensive line, if you are the type of person who knows the names of most of the recruits for next year's recruiting class, like, yes, BuckeyeScoop.com is the site for you. We, uh, Tony Gardeman and I were at practice earlier this week. I had obviously read all of Nevada's uh, reports and I'm looking and I'm like, uh-huh, that checks out. Uh-huh, that checks out. Uh-huh, that checks out. Hey, I'm starting to think Nevada might know what he's talking about. He, he might know some people. So, yes, uh, you can find all of that great information at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure you check out all of our podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you can find our podcast. Just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. You can subscribe right there and also rating and rate us and review us. That helps other folks find those shows as well. 
And finally, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. We will have a ton of content uh, from this weekend's spring game on YouTube. So you go to youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop and hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we post something new. So we'll have a uh, pregame show from the stadium, postgame show from the stadium, interviews with players and coaches. We'll probably have some video of the game, something like that. We'll see. But we'll have uh, whatever, whatever we can get. We will be, have it all on youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop as well. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.